human element is a critical feature of all aspects of ship or system design and operation. For any ship or system to operate safely and effectively, it must be designed to support the people who work it without any risk to their health and safety and with no negative impact on their overall performance. So in this issue of Alert, we're going to be looking at ergonomics. Welcome to the program. So, what do we mean by ergonomics? Well, it's the science of designing the job, equipment and workplace to fit the worker. So in this office, for example, we'd consider the suitability of the chair, the position of the desk and screen. But that's all very well if you work in an office every day. On board ship, there are many more things to consider. A ship is unique because not only is it a place of work consisting of the bridge, the machinery control room, the engine room, the cargo control room, cargo holds, galley, etc. But it is also a home to those who work on board. And it is a floating platform which can be affected by external and internal environmental conditions such as weather, temperature, humidity, noise, vibration and ship motion. Well, the answer is simple, surely. All we have to do is design the perfect ship. Sadly, there's no such thing as a perfect ship because it's actually a compromise between what is required to satisfy the regulations, what is needed to fulfil the operational role and what's affordable. But in order for any ship or system to operate uh, efficiently and safely, it must be designed to support the people who are going to operate it. And we need to remember that ergonomic considerations don't just start at the design stage of a ship and finish at build. They must be applied throughout its life cycle, especially when updating its role or its manning philosophies, or when retrofitting new systems or equipment. So, strong focus on design and optimal technical solutions and ergonomic solutions during the building phase is fundamental to the prevention of accidents. Some ship owners outsource construction management completely, but however the management is set up, there has to be close cooperation with the shipbuilder and a continuous improvement of the design. And when it comes to the operational and practical aspects of a design, decisions are very much driven by cost. What often happens when somebody comes up with a perfectly good idea or a decent design solution is that it's translated into how much does it cost. And this is perhaps where the naval architect is misunderstood. Incorporating what is good can often push the project too far until it is no longer viable. The same can be said for the ship builder who often has a different stance to the owner. And of course, stuck in the middle of this is the end user, that is, the seafarer. Here's another word that requires explanation, anthropometry. Anthropometrics is a section of ergonomics that deals with body measurements, particularly those of size, strength, and physical capacity. This information can be used by designers to define size limitations based on the anticipated population of operators and maintenance engineers. For example, making sure that the shortest expected operator or maintenance engineer can reach all controls. The same principle applies when strength and physical ability need to be considered as part of the design. And let's not forget that the seafarer population is changing not only in terms of nationality, but also because there is an increasing number of women seafarers. As we said at the beginning, for a system or ship to operate safely and effectively, it must be designed to support the people who work it. That's all for this programme. If you want to see what professional mariners have to say about ergonomics, you can view this issue of Alert on the website. Take care and hope to see you again soon.